building a high quality data set used to require a lot of human input and a lot of verifications nowadays you can skip some of this work with a powerful LOM and in this video I'm going to show you how you can annotate your own dataset using an LOM. Hey everyone, my name is Vinalin and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use a powerful LOM such as Gemini 2.5 Flash White to create sentiment analysis labels for a stock financial news. We're going to be using the Gemini model from Google to annotate about a thousand examples and I'm going to show you the steps that you need to take in order to have your own dataset annotated by this model. If you want to get access to the complete source code along with a complete AI engineering academy tutorials, go and subscribe to MXL Pro. There you're going to find the complete academy that starts from Python and machine learning basics showing you how you can build your own ML pipeline from exploratory data analysis to deploying a real world machine learning model. Then it goes over AI elements such as LOMs to use structured outputs, how you can build your RACs, CACs, agentic workflows and AI agents. So if you want to become a better AI engineer today, go and subscribe to MLXL Pro. The original data that we're going to have a look at is from the dataset called Yahoo Finance Data by this user right here. I'm going to probably going to butcher his name. So this is available on Hugging Face and I'm going to link the original description in dataset right here on this YouTube video. Here you can see a nice overview of what is available stock profile, stock officers, etc. We have a lot of information here. The one that we're going to be using uh, in this video uh, is going to be actually the stock news. So this is going to be the source uh, coming from Yahoo News, as you can see right here. And it contains these fields. I'm going to show you in a bit how these fields are going to be converted into a data set that we're going to be using. I'm in my local cursor instance and once again if you want to get access to the complete source code that is available for MLX Pro subscribers, go and subscribe to MLX Pro. The source code for this particular notebook is actually quite simple. We're going to be using Langchain to initialize our own LOM and I'm going to be doing a bit of uh, stylization for our matplotlib library. Other than that, we're going to be using just a subset of the tickers that we want to look at. And this will be the companies such as Nvidia, AMD, Tesla, Apple, Meta, etc. So these are going to be the tickers that we're going to be only interested in. This is a subset of the news from the original dataset. And as you can see here, we have a list of related symbols, a title, publisher, report date, type story, and link to the news. And finally, at the end, you can see right here that we have a column called news. This actually contains a list of one or more paragraphs that contain the text or the body of the article itself. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is to look which dates are actually going to be reported for these articles. And as you can see, these are very, very recent. This is not by chance, but by design. I wanted to get articles that are surely not used for the training of these models. So in this case, those are coming from the a little bit after the beginning of August and there are up to 23rd of August. So as you can see, these are both very recent news and old enough that we have a bit of information about this span of data sets. So in this case, this is going to contain about a thousand examples. And I usually start with about a thousand examples if I want to have a bit of more understanding of what is happening under the hood and can I use an LOM or another model to get good performance or accuracy on a specific task. So for the news column itself, as you can see, this is actually a list of objects or dicts and we have some highlights here, which usually is empty. And then within the paragraph field, we have the first, uh, in this case, example, uh, the paragraph for the news information right here. So 
these are going to be converted into plain text and I'm going to show you how you can do that. To make working with the date set a bit easier, I'm going to convert both the title and the text and the tickers into this format right here. The title is going to be a string. This is just the case right now. Then it's going to be a text for the list of the paragraphs. And then I'm going to get a list of tickers at the end. So as you can see, I'm essentially adding the title as it is. Then for the paragraph, I'm taking the first two. Most of the time, the paragraph count is actually just one. So in this case, if it is more than one, I'm going to take the second one as well. And I'm going to be joining them with a new line. So this is going to be the text right here. And then I'm taking just the company tickers that are within the related symbols and adding here as a list of tickers. And this is going to be our news data frame that I'm going to be using. And this example text where I got actually the text for the first and I believe the second paragraph uh, that we have within this example. Next thing that I usually try to do is to have a look at what is the amount of words or tokens that I have within my data set. And as you can see here for the text field, which is going to be probably the largest field as a number of tokens that is, you can see that most of the examples here are, uh, let, let's say 90 to 95% of the examples, let's say 90% here are within 1000 words or spaces. And 2000 of those are actually, let's say 98, 99%. So we're going to be good. Uh, we have some outliers here on the right, but this is to be expected. Most of the time, this is going to be just fine. But if you have some outliers with, let's say, 10,000 or 20,000 words, etc., feel free to cut them out of your data set. But in this example, this appears to be not required. The LOM that I'm going to be using for creating our data set is going to be the Gemini 2.5 Flash White. They have a very nice free tier that I'm going to be using. And keep in mind that if you want to train with these outputs, it is probably forbidden by Google. So we're going to be doing training with another data set. But in this video, I'm going to be using this model just to have a look at the data set. And then we're going to be doing some evaluations with this model. What I like about this model is that it is quite fast. It performs very well for such tasks such as sentiment analysis, etc. It is pretty flexible. And of course, as you can see here, I'm adding a thinking budget. What I have noticed that if you go overboard, overboard within the thinking budget, you're going to be getting probably a bit worse results compared to without a lot of thinking tokens. And in this case, I'm going to be using this along with an example uh, environment right here. So you need to essentially be creating your .m file, which should contain the Google API key within uh, your environment. And from there, you're going to be pasting in your Google Gen AI key. So after you have everything complete, uh, you can initialize your LOM as you can see right here. And I'm going to be using this prompt that I want the model to classify the sentiment into one of the three categories, positive, negative, and neutral. And in this case, I'm going to be passing the title and the text for the article. So as you can see, if I am actually working with a single row, this is what this looks like. And when I format this row within the prompt itself, as you can see here, I'm using the title and the text. So based on that, we are going to be getting, uh, for example, this prompt for the first example within the information. And the actual response is going to be uh, containing these two elements. The first one is going to be the thinking. This is provided by the Google Gen AI API. As you can see here, the first element uh, contains the type thinking and the thinking itself. So you can look through the thoughts of the model. Uh, as you can see here, this can be very large, but in this case, uh, the model pretty much took all of the TQ budget tokens, and then it concluded that the category is just neutral. In this case, I'm not going to be using JSON or any other formatting. I just asked the model, your response should be just the category name, no other text. 
and Gemini 2.5 flush white is generally very good at answering with just a single token or a couple of tokens, just a single word. So in this case, this should work quite well. And then I'm going to be evaluating and prompting with the whole data set. As you can see right here, I'm iterating over the newest data frame. Recall that we have about 1001 examples. I'm adding a sleeper between the calls so uh, the API doesn't throw you out. And I think that this took uh, roughly 30 to 35 minutes to annotate. Of course, if you have another model or if you're paying for that, you're going to get much better and faster results probably. So after uh, the categories are being extracted, this is the initial output that I got from the first 10 examples. And these are the categories that we got for the different outputs. As you can see here, at least this model with these news are overwhelmingly positive. We have some negative and some neutral pretty much at the same count. So keep that in mind when you're working with the model. Now would be a good time to have a look at these extractions and predictions and decide on your own whether or not the model is doing a good enough job for your tasks. So you can see that even though we have such a powerful LM, we still need to do some verification that is still a human job and qualify and understand whether or not these extractions are relatively good or do we need another model or maybe another prompt to get even better results. Finally, I'm going to be adding the categories to the data frame itself since we have just a single category for the sentiment for each example. I'm going to be adding a new parquet file to the bootcamp repository and within this parquet file we're going to be having the sentiment comb right here that I'm going to show you how I'm going to be using this in the next video to evaluate different LMs. So this is it for this video. We've seen how you can use a very powerful LOM such as Gemini 2.5 Flash White to annotate and create your own custom dataset. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use the created dataset right here to evaluate some LOMs using MLflow and other tools. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.